Hi there again and welcome back to Oil Painting with Stephen. Um, I'm an art, uh, amateur artist and I'm self-taught and the purpose of these videos really is just to give you little hints and tips for, for anyone who's beginning and starting out and uh, thinking about taking up oil painting. Now, um, I was thinking about coming up with some kind of a tagline for my, for my page. I was thinking about calling it the Cork Artist. So if you have any ideas, any suggestions, or any comments, let me know. Um, I'll be doing something different every week. And this week, I'm going to be painting a very familiar scene from Cork. Um, it's out in Ballincollig. Now, this picture was sent to me from a friend on Facebook. Um, he's living out there himself, so I'll give a big shout out now to Brendan. How are you, Brendan? Thanks very much for sending me this this picture. It's of um, it's the dam out in in in, in Ballincollig uh, National Park, and there's a little waterfall down at the end of the park there. Um, some of it is kind of broken away now. At the moment, it's kind of collapsed. But I'm going to do a nice painting of that now today. So we'll be doing some trees. We'll be doing reflections, and we'll be doing like a bit of a waterfall as well. So this is going to be a nice painting, and you'll learn a good bit in this as well. Now, I'm in my kitchen today, as you can see. Um, it's nice and bright down here, so I said I'll try it down here instead of the, the bedroom upstairs because uh, it's light and airy and uh, you really have to have proper light when you're painting a picture like this. You can't be in a dark bedroom um, because you just won't see the colours properly. So this is nice and bright and light down here, so I said I'll, I'll do it here for a change. Now, I'm going to swing the camera around and show you what I have, show you my materials. Um, so here we go. Now, this is the canvas. It's 20 by 12, and you can see, uh, that's the bridge way off in the distance. That's Inascara Bridge, okay? Way off in the distance. And there's a kind of a hill up here behind it, like a mountainous kind of a hill. And this is gonna be all trees here. I mean, have the water here with some reflections. And this is the dam then. Now, this actually broke a couple of months back, um, so it's kind of falling all down here, but I'm just going to keep it simple all the way across. So it's like a nice waterfall coming down, and there's a little bit of a ramp. It's like a concrete ramp coming down here in the water, tumbles down and into the river then. So this is going to be a nice one. Uh, this will be a bit of work. I'd say there will be two parts of this painting, part one and part two, because I couldn't get it all done in one one piece. Um, I just don't have enough video footage or video space here on my on my phone. Believe it or not, I'm doing all this with a phone. So isn't it amazing how technology has uh, advanced over the years? Now, uh, let me see. I have some brushes here and of course my cup of coffee. I can't forget the coffee, lads. I have a selection of brushes there. I have a couple here just to have them within arm's reach. I have a couple of extra ones in the jar there as well. Now a lot of these. These are some new ones actually I bought. They're lovely synthetic brushes. Um, seven quid in my local Lidl store. In my Lidl's. Look at all them. A big box of them for seven quid. And they're fantastic for oil painting. Um, I have a box here with all my paints. I have linseed oil with turpentine, some tissue and my colours. Now, today I'm going to do a nice selection of colours. I'm doing Taylor blue, uh, cobalt blue, lamp black, cadmium red, some burnt umber, burnt cyana, cadmium yellow, uh, Naples yellow and white as usual. So, that's it guys. Um, let's hope you don't see any cats jumping around the place today. It's nice and bright outside, look, nice and sunny, and it's nice and light and airy. It's just a little dark in the bedroom. Um, it's just a little dark up in the bedroom, and I don't like working in very dark areas. I just I like to work in nice light, natural, with lots of natural light. So um, I'm going to do it here for a change. So I hope you like it. And um, I will now mount this onto my stand, if you can see it. That's my stand here. I'm going to mount the camera onto the stand and then um, we'll crack on. So don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. Um, this is going to be a nice painting. 
and I'm looking forward to doing this. Right, I'm going to do a nice bright sky on this now. Right, um, nice bit of blue and some nice white clouds kind of flicking through all, all the way across. And I'm going to try and create some perspective now in the sky as well. So it's going to be going at a very slight angle and they're going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller the further away we go. All right, so dipping my brush into my thinners and I'm taking a little touch of cobalt blue with some white and let's just check that now because I don't want to go too dark with this um, that's not bad now make this quite thin you don't have to go very 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 thick with this paint at all make it nice and thin um, put plenty of thinners into it and actually what I'm going to do is and you can do this if it makes life easier for you I'm just going to put a rough mark where my clouds are going to be, look, so I can just stay out of that then with my blue. And that'll make, a bit, that'll make it a little bit easier so I don't have to be mixing into the blue all the time. And there could be a nice big one here. And just be very, very rough now with this. And perhaps one is across there. So I can just kind of skim around that now slightly with my blue. All right. Now, so let's just kind of go around these a little bit here. You see? And that'll make it much easier then to paint the white clouds afterwards. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just paint blue all the way across and put in your white clouds afterwards. That's absolutely fine as well. But I said I'd try it. Something different this time. Now, more white and more blue. There we go. And let's go over here. There we go. And I hope you can see this all right now, guys. Just turn that a little bit for you. There we go. And I'm just putting almost white then along the bottom. It's a very, very, very pale blue along the bottom here. So it's going to be a nice, bright day. Light and airy. Plenty of light in the sky. No dark grey clouds today, my friends. It's a lovely day in Cork today. Now... Oh, let's just bring that across. And this is just a filling in stage, really. Just covering all the canvas. There we go. And a little bit more just on the right hand side. And I'm only mixing little, tiny bits of paint now with this. I'm not mixing big, huge. You know the way on some videos when you see artists painting and they mix big, huge lumps of paint on their canvas or on their palette. I, said, I beg your pardon. They mix big, huge lumps of paint on their palette. And you have to think to yourself, that's a lot of paint we're mixing for one, for one part of a painting. Um, obviously, they can afford to buy lots of paint, but I can't, unfortunately. So, um, right. That's not bad. There we are. Now, I'm just blending this across with my brush, my blender brush, just very lightly. And I want to go into, now I want to start with the grey section of the sky first. Um, let me see what kind of a brush I could use now for this. Right, a little flat brush, okay? Nice little flat brush. Now I'm just going to turn this slightly so you can see this a little bit better. That's it. And let's take some, uh, let's just take some lamp black and a little white. And I want to make this slightly warm. Now I don't want to make it a very cold grey. And it's going to be very, very pale as well. So I'm going to put a touch of burnt sienna into that. And that's just going to warm it up very, very slightly for me. Now let's just try this. Ah, that's not bad. So now, 
I'm going to put the shadow on the base of the cloud, okay? The underside of the cloud. So I'm just coming along here and I'm kind of flicking it upwards. Alright? Just like that. And I'm going to be taking a bit of time now, lads, with the sky here because I want to get a nice sky going. I'm going to be doing lots of blending and there'll be lots of dry brushwork as well. And what I mean is just paint directly from the palette, not thinned out at all. You see, there's lots of different techniques you can use in oil painting, and there's lots of different ways of creating clothes and creating trees. And um, I prefer working with the oils because they stay nice and wet for, for much longer, you know, rather than the acrylics. And you can really blend them nicely together. Now I'm going to just imagine there's another one just coming across up here. And that's not bad. Right. I'm going to give my brush a wipe. Just dipping it in my thinners and then giving it a wipe on my tissue. Now the thing about oil painting is, um, unlike other media, say watercolours for instance and acrylics, when you're finished using a colour with those, you can just dip your brush into your jar of water and just clean off your brush completely. But with oil painting, people don't tend to do that. You can if you like, but I think most people, they just kind of keep one brush um, for each particular colour they're using. So if I'm using green on this brush, I'll put it to one side until I need green again. Do you understand? So I'll have a brush for green, a brush for blue, maybe a brush for uh, you know, purple or something. And I'll try and keep those brushes separately then if I can. I won't be cleaning them all the time. The only time I'll be cleaning the brush really is just dipping it in to the turpentine once and just drying it on my tissue, take off the bulk of the paint. And then I can use another colour fairly easily with that. So that's the only difference with the oil painting. Um, so for that reason you only need a tiny, tiniest little bit of turpentine, I'll show you, and linseed oil. You only need the tiniest little bit. That's all I need now for this entire painting. Okay? So that's just another little uh, bit of information. It's probably useless information, but nonetheless, it's information. Now, I'm just going to go with this clean brush directly into my white. And if you find that your palette is dirty by the white, just give it a little rub of tissue and take off that mixed colour that's there already. Now, and I have a nice clean section of my palette in for my white. So, directly into the white and let's create some nice clothes here there we go and my daughter Ava has just joined me she wants to see what I'm doing what do you think yeah she said it's very very good she loves my painting don't you Ava yeah, yeah she does I don't think you can hear her now but she's next to me there now just some white and I'm blending it in here to this grey Nice and gently. You see? Isn't that nice? And it's creating all different shades within the grey. Now, I want to give this cloud a nice sort of, um, how would I say now, a nice kind of fluffy effect. So, I'm going to be blending the white right out into the blue. You see? And I might even add a little touch of Naples yellow. Give it that real bright highlight kind of uh, a colour. And as well, blend the grey down into the blue slightly. I just want to make this nice and soft. I don't want any, I don't want any hard edges in the sky. Now, Let's try it again. There we go. That's right. Now I'm just going to continue blending this in. There we go. And try and blend it into the sky. Now I'm using a very dry brush for this. Okay. And I'm kind of scrubbing it to blend it in. Just a little, not too much. I just want to make a nice kind of a soft, fluffy 
kind of a cloud effect. You see? Nice and soft. Because it's not a very, very cloudy sky today. It's just a few kind of just floating across here and there. And there we go. Let's go up here to this one here. Now, you might say these are a little dark. I'm going to be lightening these again. I'm going to be putting more white onto these. So let's just blend them into that blue sky underneath. Nice and soft. And I hope you're trying these um, techniques and these paintings at home. I really do because it's such an easy media to use. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to tell me they find the eyes very difficult to use. And that's because they're just not using them correctly sometimes. And I suppose it does take a, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, I suppose. It's kind of, it's similar to the acrylics. But they're used in completely different manners altogether. The acrylics are fantastic, as in that they dry very quickly and you can put nice glazes and you can do different layers very, very quickly. That's the nice thing about acrylics. And especially if you're out and about, which are easy, and you want to get a quick sketch of a subject or something, or a pond or a lake or something, that you just want to get a quick painting down on your canvas, then the acrylics are fantastic for that. Um, but I just find them very, very limited in the, the type of effects that you can achieve with the acrylics. Um, I also find them very sort of matte and very bland on the canvas when they go on. Now I know you can add medias to it to increase the transparency and increase the glossiness, you know, all that type of stuff. But it's a lot of, it's just, a, I suppose, I just find them a bit of work, a bit of, there's a lot of hard work in the critics to get the effect that you want. That's what I find. That's probably the easiest way of explaining it. Um, with the eyes, you just have a lot more freedom. I mean, you know, I could just walk away and leave this and come back in an hour's time and keep blending. And the paint is still wet on the canvas. Uh, that's, that's just me, it's just my opinion. I just prefer the eyes for that reason. Um, but you know, certainly give it a try, give the acrylics a try, and by all means, you know, and you can give the watercolours a try as well. Who knows, you might prefer the watercolours or you might even prefer the acrylics than the oils. It's um, up to yourself entirely. Now, I'm just creating some clouds here off in the distance. Uh, I'm using the same brush, by the way. Uh, I'm just taking a little piece of paint just on the edge of my brush. And because they're synthetic, look, there's a lovely flat, lovely flat edge to the brush. And you can get nice fine lines with that as well. You see? If this was a bristle brush, it would just kind of splay out and you'd have very, very thick brush strokes and that's just not what I'm looking for right now. Um, that's why I'm using the synthetics. I've used bristles for a long time. I've used bristles for years. Um, and I just I decided to try the synthetics and I just prefer the the feel of the synthetic, you know. Um, it's just me. I can I can get a lot more precise uh, work, a lot more precise paintings. Uh, you know, a lot, it just gives me more control. I find. Now, they're coming around nicely, aren't they? They're blending in nicely now into the sky. Um, I'm just going to put a little touch of Naples yellow into the white. Um, I just want to highlight just some parts of the clouds there. Just give them a nice kind of a kick where the sun is sort of catching them, you know? So, sorry, I'm looking at here and there. See? Just kind of brightens it up a little. And let's do a little here. And let's go over the grey as well. Create some nice layers. And um, let's see now. More white. I want to whiten them again. I, I think I want to whiten the, the clouds 
just a little more, just on the, on the light side. I think they're still a little dark just for me. So I'm going to lighten them a little bit more. There we are. And I just want to lighten the blue as well down here a little. Make that a little brighter. And by the way, I'm not using any thinners in this now. I'm just dipping directly into my white paint. That's all I'm doing. Um, more here. There we are. Well, we have nice, nice fluffy clouds just floating across the sky. And looking at the clouds, it looks like there could be rain. There could be rain maybe in the afternoon by looking at these clouds. So, um, you know, a little bit of grey is no harm in the cloud. Let's brighten this one slightly. There we go. There's a fade off then. And the front of this one as well, I just want to bring this over a little bit more. And I'm just dipping into my white hair now, that's all I'm doing. Just the very edge of the white, just with the brush, the edge of the brush. I'm not filling the brush up too much. There we go. Um, let me see now. A little bit more there. That's it. And we lighten this one along here as well. And of course you can practice all this yourself at home in your own time. I'm just going to take my time with this one now lads, folks, they say. Uh, I'm just going to take my time with this one and get a really nice painting done this week. And this is typically how I would paint normally. I take my time and I just kind of apply layer after layer after layer. And I might even let this dry. And even at the end of the painting I could still come back and do more work on this. On this sky. Because the sky is what really would catch people's eye. You know? Um, no, that's not too bad for now. I think I'll take my blender brush and let's just... Soften some of those. Soften them in together a little bit and even blend them into the blue as well. Underneath. See? And that's really helping as well, isn't it? So, thanks to Brendan. Big thanks to Brendan for this. He sent me on these lovely photographs. And, uh, Brendan, if I sell it for a couple of thousand, you'll be first on my list. Buddy. Right. Now, um, next, we have kind of a hill, a hill back here behind this. So I'm going to put that in next. And I'm going to just move on to a slightly bigger brush just for that. Just a slightly bigger one. And I'm going to take um, some cadmium yellow, some Naples yellow. Let's take some, um, let me see now. We'll go with some tail or blue this time. The nice dark tail or blue. Now, that's a very, very rich green, okay? I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to lift my paddle up here now and just show you, alright? Now, you can see that better. That's a very rich green, right? So, to tone that down, add in a touch. You could even put in burnt umber or burnt sienna. I'm going to try a touch of burnt sienna. And that should tone it down slightly. So it's more of a brownie kind of a, wa a warm brownie kind of a green. Now, you see that? So that's how easy it is. And that's not bad at all. And now I'm going to use this for the front of the hill here, the, the part that's kind of closest to us. And I'm going to put in more blue. I'm going to put more cobalt blue into that with a touch of white. 
and I'm going to use that colour then for the distant, the hill going off in the distance here. And it kind of goes up this side over here. And I've been very, very rough with it here now, just kind of scrubbing it and tap the impression of some trees along the hilltop. You see that? How easy that is? Very, very simple. There we are. Now, and then let's bring it down, put some more white into it here, because I want to create a lot of depth and distance in this painting. Now I'm going to leave the bridge here, there's a little tiny bridge just in the distance here, so I'm going to leave that. Um, in fact, do you know what I could do? I could just paint right across it, and I can just put the bridge in afterwards then. And it's only going to be just an impression of the bridge anyway. There, not, there won't be a whole lot of detail in the bridge. So let's just fill this in here now, right down to our horizon line. I'm going to call this the horizon line here. This is the edge of the lake where the trees the trees come down to the river bank, okay? So I'm just going to call this, call this the horizon line for now. So, let's just keep going with that. So the same again. And let me see now. Paint all over the place. Just paint all over me, lads. Just clean my hands here. I got a bit of paint. I don't know where it came from. It just appeared on my hand. Um, right. I'll take a little bit of. Cadmium yellow again, a little bit of Taylor blue, and let's try a bit of burnt umber this time. There we are, that's alright, that'll do. And I'm going to start making it darker now, and you'll see why in a minute. I want this to be very dark, this area. And the reason is, I can then use this dark as my shadow for the trees because it's all trees along here in the front. So I can use that dark shadowy colour then as the shadow for my trees. You see? Well, that's the plan anyway. So I'm mixing Taylor Blue with some burnt umber and a touch of cadmium red. And that's a real blacky, bluey green kind of a colour. And that's what I want. I want this to be a very kind of a natural, a very natural kind of a painting. There we are, a bit of burnt umber into that. And let's just bring it across here and blend it gently. There we go. Now, uh, let's go again. From Taylor Blue. Burnt umber, because you see, Taylor blue and burnt umber will make a kind of a dark green as well. You see, so you can experiment with different colours. So you have Taylor blue and cobalt blue, and they're two completely different blues, and they will make two completely different greens when mixed with cadmium yellow. So, experiment, just experiment with different colours, and eventually you kind of get to know what you like, you know, what kind of shades you like, what kind of paints you like to use. So that's what I would say. Just mess around with some colours and see what you think yourself. There we go. Now, just creating the line of trees just along the top there. There we are. And that's that bad. I think that'll do for now. No. And just tap this in here, just blend it in gently. Create some texture off in the distance. That's all it is. And it's kind of creating the impression of trees away off in the distance as well. You see? There we are. And that's the Lee Valley. Going all the way up into Inniscara. 
and um, there's a lovely park out here as well, Valencolic. I come out here every couple of weeks with my daughter, and um, normally the, when the tide is out, this is all kind of it's all kind of gravel and sand, and we go down in there and we do a bit of skimming with the rocks, and you know the kids go looking for little minnows and small fish in the little watery areas here. Um, but it's a lovely park and it's very, very big. There's plenty to do out there. So, give it an old visit. Um, pop out there, see what you think. There's always people selling coffee and donuts and sandwiches and all that kind of stuff. It's really fantastic. It's a lovely place to go for a, a couple of hours, you know. Pass away a couple of hours. So, uh, pop out there. See what you think of yourself. I, I think it's fantastic anyway. Now, okay, no, we're not looking too bad at the moment. Right, I think what I'll do is, um, I'm going to leave that texture, normally I would maybe blend that slightly with the blender brush, okay, but I'm going to leave it, I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, I'm just going to leave that soak in just for a few minutes, just, you know, just to soak into the canvas slightly. And my trees then will stay on it a little bit better. They won't blend in as much. So let me see now. Right. Um, I could just bring this a little bit higher just here. Just slightly. And it's very simple to do this just with the brush, okay? Dry brush and just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. It's so simple, it really is. See? Very, very, very simple. And you'd never think it was so easy to get trees so quickly on a canvas, would you? You'd never think it. Now let's just bring this down here a little. We have a tiny little river bank as well just here. I'm going to leave that. That's kind of a bright river bank coming into the water. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put this under colour in here on the waterfall and that that then can be kind of drying in slightly while I get on with the trees. So look, I'm going to take some Taylor Blue. Now make this nice and wet, okay? Taylor Blue and some Cadmium Red. Let's just check that now. Mm, it's not too bad. Put a touch more Taylor Blue into it. Now I'm pulling down in the direction of the water, alright? Always remember that, because if I go across this way, it's just not going to look right, is it? So, pull down gently. Huh? Follow this line that you have and pull down here. And this will help afterwards as well, you see, give the impression of the water and the direction of the water coming down. You see? No, let's add a touch of burnt umber to that. Um, I might even put some cobalt blue into it. There we go. And it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes over, and that's creating perspective, you see? It's wide here, and it gets slightly narrower the further over it goes. And that's your perspective then. That's creating the distance that you need. Now I'm going to stop it there, and the water bank is kind of broken here, so I'm just going to leave this water flow down in here, into this lower section. Um, now I'm going to make this slightly bluer just here. So more cobalt blue, and tailor blue, there we are. And you see, that can be drying in then while I'm working away on the trees. I'm going to be putting lovely bright white then over this. This will create the water coming down. So I'm looking forward to this now, lads. This is going to be this is going to be a fun one. I'm going to do the same here. Um, maybe some black for this one. Perhaps a bit of brown. So you see, you can kind of blend all different colours in. And this is a kind of a rocky area. Then, now it's covering water on the photograph, but normally it's kind of a dry, rocky ramp comes down here into the river. But I'm going to cover it with water. I'm going to create loads of lovely water today now with this painting. And again, 
follow the angle. Here we are. No. This is kind of a grassy verge here that we have a grassy bank, so I'm just leaving that. No. Oh. I hope you're enjoying this. This is going to look uh, this will look cool now when it's finished, I reckon. Right. I'm going to move on to these trees over here, and I just want to create some light on the trees. Okay, and I'm just looking now, and I'm trying to decide which is the best brush for this job. Um, you see, I have a huge selection of brushes, and each one creates a different effect. So, let me see now. Yeah, I think I'll try this one for now. Now, this is a kind of splayed. This is very worn now. You can see this brush is worn. Okay, and it's sort of splayed at the top. This is going to be a nice brush now for trees. So, let's try this. Now, dip into my torps and dry it. This just moistens the brush, okay? And let's dip into some cadmium yellow. Now pick a clean part of your palette. I'm going to pick it up now again to show you the palette, okay? Now, let me show you. Right. I hope you can see this all right now, lads. Right. A little bit of cadmium yellow. A little bit of naples yellow, because naples yellow kind of dulls down the colour slightly. Right. And I put a little bit of white in there as well. Now, I'm pushing the paint with the tip of the brush, look, and it's all gathering then on the very tip of the brush. You see? That's all it is. Now, let's try this and just see what we, what we think. If it's too bright, which it probably will be, we can just make it a little bit uh, cooler with some blue. So, let's just try this now. Uh, that's not too bad. And I'm barely touching the canvas now with this. I'm barely, barely touching it. It's like I'm holding a feather. That's what I'm doing now. There we go. And blend that in then to the background. And of course, these are very, very big trees. Yeah. Tap very, very gently. And then blend it into that darker colour behind. See? And of course, this is really only our first layer. We can go later on this again after this. Okay, now, I think a little touch of blue might help with that. So let's just put in a touch of blue. And that might give us a little bit of distance. There we are. That's not bad. And this cool blue now is giving a nice distance in the painting as well. So off in the distance now use light kind of greeny bluey colours to create your distance. Alright? And the closer you get then the richer the colours. Because blue will always give you distance in the painting. Okay, remember that. That's coming on. That's not bad, no? Coming on nicely, I, I suppose. It's coming on nicely. Um, let's go a little bit closer. And I see each time I load my brush, I'm getting different effects because the hairs are just kind of moving around differently on the brush. And that's the great thing about these synthetics. They kind of move around in different ways. There we go. That's it. That's a nice kind of a tree falling over there, isn't it? Now, I think I'll move to a slightly different brush. Um, I might try... In fact, you know what? I'll try this bigger one. I'll try the bigger one for the close up trees here. We'll give it a go, will we? Yeah, why not? Right, some cadmium yellow, some cobalt blue, and let's put a touch of burnt sienna into that now just to warm this up, okay? Let's just warm it up. Now, let's see what effect this brush gives us. Let's see the different effects. There, you see? See, that gives a much different effect now, doesn't it? It's a much nicer effect. That's the thought. 
the edge of the tree is kind of falling over I'm just tapping very very gently there we are that's nice isn't it really it's amazing how easy this is to do you really have to try it guys and it's very very satisfying as well to be able to create trees just with this brush and two tree colours it really is very very satisfying to be able to do with this now um, we'll have another one kind of falling down this way And then kind of feathering this now up into that dark colour. I don't want to lose the darks. Remember, the darks are your friends. There we go. And I'm going to create a nice little curve at the top of that. There we are. And let's do a nice little tree just in here. Now I'm going to put a little bur burnt sienna into that. Let's just put a nice warm colour into this as well. Just kind of warm it up a little bit slightly. Just as slightly, that's all. Now, just along the bottom. And a bit more cadmium yellow. So what I'm doing now really is I'm kind of just adding touches of colour here and there. Just to create some texture and kind of make it more pleasing to the eye as well. Now there's a couple of um, stalks of trees, a couple of tree trunks as well going up there. So I'm going to take my little rigger, my small little pointy brush, okay, and I'm going to just go into some. Now I'm going to go into a lighter colour here. I think just some Naples yellow touch of white and a bit of that greeny colour that was already mixed on the canvas. Okay, uh, perhaps such a burnt sienna as well. So it's kind of a, a very tan kind of a colour, skin kind of a colour. And let's just put some suggestion of one or two tree trunks poking through just here and there. And it's just an impression guys, that's all it is. You see, that's all it is. I'm not going to any great lengths now to create uh, little branches and little twigs and all that kind of stuff. I'm really not, there's really no need. There we are, just one or two. And that's not bad. Now, I'm going to need to make one or two of these trees higher just here because they are actually quite high in the painting or in the photograph I, I, I mean I do apologise I'm blabbering on today just one or two of these just a little bit higher just higher up there we are and maybe just one there you see how easy it is now so that's kind of more or less our section there now finished, right? Um, what I just wanted to do was put some real dark colour. So I'm taking some Taylor Blue, some Burnt Umber. And I just wanted to put some dark colour just along the bottom here, just here and there. And that'll act as a nice kind of a separation then for the river. You see? That's all I wanted to do. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'd be happy enough with that now. So I think, um, I think I might just move on and try and get that bridge done off in the distance. So let's mix up a nice grey for that. Let's take some cobalt blue and some cadmium red and a little bit of white. And we have a little bridge off in the distance here. Um, let's just try and get it in roughly. As I said, it's hardly even going to be seen, really. But it is there. 
it is there so we have to put it in. Well, we don't have to, but you know. You know what I mean. Now, the arches of the bridge. There we are. And I'm just trying to get this in there now. And then um, we can move on then. And maybe start getting some reflections done. I think we're going quite well today. And this one then kind of disappears into the, the trees here. So now, I'm going to take my little pointy brush and take some burnt umber with some of that dark blacky colour we had earlier. Now I'm not going too dark because remember this is off in the distance. But I'm just going to put the impression of the arch under the bridge. That should kind of bring it to life a little. You see? That's yeah, looking a bit better now, so far. So far, so good. And we have one in here. And these darks now really kind of bring it to life as well, don't they? So let's uh, put a little darker here. Here. Just along the top. And let's put a little bit just along the top. Separating that then from the trees behind. You see that? And oh, that's looking better already now, isn't it? Right. Now, I am conscious of this little light just along the front of the bridge, just here. And the columns. There we are. And if it's a little too much, just dab it with your finger. See? That just kind of takes the bite off of it, takes the edge off. Now, we are going very well, I have to say. Um, we'll get the reflections in here, I think, people. Yeah? That'll be nice. I think we'll try that. We'll get the reflections in. So let's... Now, there's two ways of doing... There's, well, there's lots of different ways of doing reflections. Um, normally, I will just put pull the greens down. I will put put the same tones in and pull them down, okay? And then blend them in and put some white. Um, but there's a little light here, so I want to bring that light down onto this first. So I'm going to take touch of cobalt blue, some white. And let's just put some of that in here, just across under that bridge, right? That's a little, there's a bit of a green going through that now, so I'm going to put some white into that just to brighten it a little bit. And a cross in here. There we go. And I do apologise, but I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. Right, so I'm going to bring some. I'm just going to put a touch of white into this here. Okay, I want to keep this nice and kind of light here uh, before I start moving over to the green from the trees. Alright. There we go. Now, I'm not worried too much about the reflection of the bridge because it's so far away, you'll probably hardly even see anything anyway. Um, so let's. Let's start putting in greens here. Now, the greens in the water are going to be darker than the greens above. Because of the way, to, the, way the water reacts with the greens and the reflections. Uh, you know, they're always generally darker than the colour above them. Okay, so I'm just mixing a darker green here. You can kind of me mess around with your greens now with this. Um, I'm just putting in a nice kind of a dark, rich green. Um, plenty of brown into it. Alright. 
put plenty of brown. We can put some lights in there in a the minute as well. Some highlights. So a nice rich dark greens. And downward strokes then. Alright guys. Downward strokes. Now, I'm going to mix it into this lighter colour here, just slightly. You see that? So it's naturally blending in then. You see? That's quite nice. That's the beauty of oils. If this was acrylics now, you see, I wouldn't be able to do that because the white would be dry almost instantly. As soon as you put the colour on, it's dry. That's the thing with the acrylics, and that's very, very difficult to get used to, I find. Um, you know, if you understand what I mean. So you kind of, you almost have to be one step ahead all the time with the acrylics, and you have to kind of plan what, what you're going to do before you paint, because you need to allow for blending, you know, and moving from one colour to the next. So, you know, there's a lot to think about the acrylics whereas this is kind of more I'm just say it's kind of more laid back it's, yeah it's more laid back really that's the word I'm looking for a lot more laid back so you can kind of do it at your leisure if you want to go away for a cup of coffee you can not have to worry about the paint drying on you so now I'm going well now with this so you can see already now there's a reflection starting to manifest here in front of us um, so that's the dark I have all the darks now I'm going to reflect some of these lighter colours in the trees just a little just a little alright not too much now don't go crazy with this let's just take some cadmium yellow and put it onto that kind of dirty mix that we had on the palette already just a slightly lighter colour that's all and let's just put it in here and there. You see? Just here and there, that's all. And maybe a little bit up here. I want that a bit brighter now, actually. Ah, that's better. You see? And we have a really light one then. Just here. So, you can see already now. This reflection is starting to come to life. A little bit of lighter blue just here. There we go. Now, I'm looking at that bridge and I think perhaps we could bring a little reflection down. Just a little bit. Okay, just a little. Now the reflections are very still today in this painting. So there won't be much there won't be many ripples at all. Okay, I'm just putting in a suggestion of this bridge now, I'm not being too too fussy. Not being too fussy at all. As I said, it's just an impression, it's so far off in the distance that you'll hardly even see any part of the the bridge in detail so I'm just bringing down a very very general very very rough impression of the bridge there now I'm just going to straighten this across with my blender brush and pull it down gently ok well, you can see now let's continue on here and pull these down in fact I just missed a little bit of this here. Let's fill that in there. No. Right, that'll do. Okay, let's start putting these reflections down. Straight down, vertical lines all the way. There we are. And then very lightly pull across them once and there we are isn't that lovely now to bring that to life even more 
I'm going to go with my palette knife and take some of that white with a little bit of green that was mixed already on the palette. So it's a very whitey kind of a green. And just here and there along the river bank, I'm just going to dab in a little hint of some ripples coming along here and there. There we are. That's quite nice, isn't it? And these techniques now are all basic techniques, very, very easy techniques to learn. Now, we go. I won't overdo it. Let's just blend those very gently now across with our blender brush. Very, very gently. Again, as if you're holding a feather. And that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Okay, before I finish this part of the tutorial, um, I think I'll just come across at the top of that waterfall with some um, with some light colour. I'm just going to take some cobalt blue and some white. I'm just going to come across the top of that there. Just to get ready for a waterfall. And then I'm just going to blend that back into the reflection. Okay. Very gently. There we are. Um, now, I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, I'm going to take my little flat brush, little flat brush, and give it just a little dab in the thinners. Let's go to some of that white with a little bit of blue that's in it already. And let's just get some slightly rough water going just along here. Yeah. Let's continue the water in here. And again there'll be some reflections here as well, only some small ones though. So I'm gonna put those in now. Um it's just a little river bank that's there, a small bank that's kinda of sticking out into the the river. So look, we'll put it in. We can put the reflection in. Because I know it's gonna be a, a green. So I'll just put a little green reflection in just there. There we are. And again, put it down. And blend it across very gently. Just very, very gently. Right, let's get some white now. There we go. Now the water kind of comes down here, but it turns, it turns it here and comes down this ramp. You see, just like that, one brush stroke, it turns, turns and comes around like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big brush and let's dip into some white, perhaps a touch of cobalt blue into this just a touch and let's just pull some white water across here very same as the waterfall all right just pull it down and lift it off you see very simple okay let's try it again lean down hard and lift off let's go again There we are. And it's that simple, it really is. I'm going to put a bit of Naples yellow into it as well, just here. And that's the water coming along. Now, at the top of that, let's just kind of... Let me get my brush here and my small brush that I was using. We need to kind of blend this into the water behind it here. 
Okay, so the water's coming along and it's kind of falling over. There we are. Yeah, that's a bit better now, isn't it? Okay, so I think I will leave it at that for part one. Um, in part two, we will be doing this wa lovely waterfall. Oh, I'm just diddling along here now, I'm just kind of messing around. Uh, in part two, we're going to be doing the waterfall, finishing some reflections. Um, we might do a bit more on the trees here, I think. Um, so, for now, it's not looking too bad. Actually, I think while I have you here now, I'll just do this riverbank. And we can be done with this section of the painting then. Would you agree? Yeah, let's just put this riverbank in here. I'm just mixing a dark green. Alright. Nice dark green with some burnt umber and black then just at the end here. And then let's just take some cadmium yellow, some Naples yellow and a little white and dab that in there. See? And let's bring it up here. Little kind of trees and all sorts of things coming up. And that's not bad no at all. And we'll cut across that now with the knife as well. Let's just cut across that gently here with the knife. There we go. And that is a little river bank done. Just like that. Isn't that quick? So, let me take the camera off. There's my cat again. There's Susie. I still haven't, would you believe it? I still haven't gotten around the painting Susie yet. I have so much going on at the moment, I just cannot seem to find the time to sit down and paint Susie. Because there's a lot of work in Susie. There'll be a bit of work now painting this cat. So I have Susie and I have Bella. There's Bella out the back. Oh, she's nice and white, isn't she? And Rosie, the black one, is around here somewhere as well. So, um, yeah, maybe we might do an old couple of sections on painting animals. Might be nice. So, okay, guys, this is it so far. I'm doing well. Um, tune in to part two to see this finished. And I'd say it's going to look very well when it's finished. And we might even get a fisherman up there as well, fishing off the waterfall. So, um, I'll see you in part two. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, stay tuned.